There's nothing quite like that new bike feeling. And there's nothing quite like damaging your new bike. <laughs> oh dear, I've had a whoopsie with the H2. Yep, that's the petrol tank. Oh my God. Welcome along guys, well I've had a boo-boo as I said in the little intro there and what I showed you there, that is my petrol tank because <laughs> God, I've been an absolute knobhead and I've managed to drop the bike while getting it off the Abba stand, the Abba sky lift. So with the Abba sky lift it like mounts into the frame, there's a couple of mounting points into the frame where you, where you, plug, the, where you plug the lift into and as I was taking it off of the sky lift, on my other bikes, the, the adapters like go around the bolts. On this, because of the trellis frame, they go into the centre and it sort of catches a little bit. So as I pushed the sky lift away to get it off, could get the bike off of it, the bike just fell away from me a little bit and, and fell against the sky lift. So it didn't fall all the way down, it fell to like 45 degrees. <laughs> I tried to pick it up and then sort of dropped it a bit again as well. So, and then I picked the bike up, looked it over. At the back of the bike, there's a little scuff on the uh, the rear tail piece as well. But that's not so bad. I mean, I, I can live with that. But then I was looking it over. I was I think I've got away with it. I think I've got away with it. Then I looked at the petrol tank and I could not believe my eyes. You know, a massive dent right on the crease here and all the paint flaking off as well. So it couldn't have even get pulled out. So I wouldn't, I couldn't believe my eyes. I mean, if you've ever dropped a brand new bike or anything like that, you know, it's bad. It's really bad. I've never dropped a bike before in my life. Since I was like a kid and dropped my 50s and my 125s, I've never dropped a bike. I've waited until I've bought <laughs> a 25 grand H2. I didn't pay 25 grand by the way. But I've waited until I've got a, a H2 and then I've dropped it and smashed the tank. And I mean, the bad news is you can't even buy, you can't buy this paint because it's not paint. This finish on this, this mirror finish, is a result of a chemical reaction with real silver. So Kawasaki spray like a two gun thing, real silver, and this, I don't know, chemical, and it reacts to the paint and causes, and, and creates this mirror finish with real silver. So it's not a paint you can buy. It does that mirror finish and then they put like nine coats of clear lacquer on top of it <laughs> to finish it off. So it's new tank time. It's brand new tank time for the H2. And guess, and it's not a cover, it's a full metal tank that goes right under the seat, you know, to, to hold all the petrol. So it's a big old part. Guess how much to buy a H2 tank, fully finished, obviously in that silver. Thank you. Guess it's gone. How much do you think a H2 tank would cost? Place your bets. What do you reckon? 500 quid. A grand, maybe. Keep on guessing upwards. <laughs> a brand new H2 tank is £2,000. £2,000. I mean, I had no idea. I, I would have guessed something ridiculous like that. I would have thought it could be anything. So I contacted Vinny at Wheels Motorcycles. He's the sales manager there and he's been fantastic. I, I sent him a WhatsApp and said, <laughs> Vinny, I, I, I've dropped the H2, I need a new petrol tank. <laughs> and I think his response was something like, ooh, that's not gonna be cheap. So uh, he phoned me back in about 20 minutes. I was, I was devastated and he, he said, look, brand new tank is gonna cost you two grand, but I have one in stock, a used one. So <laughs> I couldn't believe it. Basically what happened is they had a customer who bought a brand new H2 carbon, so not the same as this, the carbon version. And the tank was, it was a hairline scratch in the tank about here, it's here somewhere. Tiny little hairline scratch. But the guy, obviously a brand new 28 grand bike, whatever they are, the carbon versions, he wasn't gonna accept it with any sort of mark on the paintwork. So Wheels had to buy a brand new tank. So they had in stock this carbon tank. Don't you dare pull in on me. They had in stock a carbon tank with this tiny hairline scratch. Um, retail, as I say, £2,000. They said, let me have it for 600 quid. <laughs> 
so I absolutely dodged a bullet. So the next day they came back to pick up the H2SX I had, which there will be a part two of that review coming shortly. I'll get that out, but I just wanted to get this update, update out there first. But they brought the uh, this tank down with them. I held it up next to the bike, you know, just to make sure, because the finish is slightly different on this one. I'll, I'll, I'll talk you through it in a minute. But I, I thought, yeah, well, I've got to have it 600 quid, and it's that or 2,000 pound, you know. It's, it's, there's not even a question, I don't have 2,000 pound. I spent every bit of savings I have to buy this bike. I had to put the 600 pound on my credit card for, the <laughs> for this tank. So I couldn't ride around with a massive dent in my tank. Oh, it was soul destroyed. Every time I, I couldn't even look at the bike. I couldn't even look at the bike knowing that thing was on the side of it like that. Just an absolutely devastating feeling to damage your pride and joy. I mean, this was within, I had it about four days, the bike. Literally had the bike four days and I've done that to it. It's just, it's just, oh, I can't tell you how gutted I was. And, and since then, I've been almost scared to touch the bloody thing. I haven't put it back on the Abba stand yet for fear of doing something similar again. So yeah, it's it sort of tarnished the whole ownership experience a little bit. I read the book the other day to see, you know, what is the official process from Kawasaki for running this bike in. And what they say is keep it below 4,000 revs for the first 600 miles. Then you have the service done at 600 miles. And then, you have to do another 400 miles, not exceeding 7,000 revs. That's a thousand miles of running it in, which is, uh, oh, that's gonna be a bit depressing because I'm already itching to open it up. Now, I know people will say, oh, don't bother running it into the book. Just, just rev it, you know, bed it in, do the hard braking and all that. I know the benefits of doing the hard braking. This is a moppy bit of road here. You know, I've, I've read all that, you know, you. Uh, people say if you run it too soft like that you can you know you can get blow by on your piston rings don't seal properly you get carbon deposits at the top of the barrel so when you do end up opening it up that gets scraped and that damages your rings it's just a minefield to know the best thing to do to run a bike in but just taking it easy seems to sit better with me than <laughs> caning it from you i i, I I can't do it. I can't cane it from you. I'll go as per the Kawasaki instructions. He says as he goes past 4,000 revs already. What I might do is just do a start to build it up a little bit. Do the odds bit of power through just to get things. I think once I've gone past 200 miles, I think I'll do the odds bit of power running, not run, but just to take it up to maybe 7,000 revs. Just to start to break it in a little bit. I think that first couple of hundred is the, the absolutely critical stuff. But I don't know, there, there's so many different opinions on how you run a bike in. That's the way I'm doing it anyway. Comments below how you would do it. Ride it like you stole it, chops. So yeah, I'm actually enjoying this ride again. I, you know, the, the, I, It's such a shame that that happened with the tank because it has sort of ruined and taken the shine, <laughs> literally, off the whole ownership experience of having this bike and it's made me look very aware that having a bike you cannot get repainted and you have to buy the parts directly from Kawasaki pre-painted is a bit scary the last thing you want to do is put this bike down the road I mean I, the, the panels on this I don't have an I, I haven't even looked into the prices of the panels and stuff yet but you know it's out of the question that this bike gets dropped again <laughs> and that I'm hoping that isn't gonna spoil my ownership experience my traps i've bedded the tires in now all of that horrible wax is off i've slowly built the corner speed up they're all beautiful now tiniest of tiny chicken strips on the rear that's it but she's uh, i'm well happy with how it actually runs and how it performs it doesn't feel heavy when you're riding it at all it's a little bit slow to change direction. You know, you have, you have to give it a bit of counter steering effort. You know, it's not massively quick to change direction. Maybe some carbon wheels would help in that respect. Mm -hmm. Carbon wheels. I've also bought the GSXR as well. <laughs> After that video went up about a week later, the invoice came in an email. Oh, here's the invoice, sorry for the delay. If you can make payment to these bank account details, lovely jubbly. I was like, oh God. 
I've just spent the money now. <laughs> so not only have I bought a H2, I've also got a loan to buy the GSX-R. So I've just taken out personal loan for the GSX-R because the, the price we agreed, even though it was six or seven months ago, it's still a good price for the bike and everything I've done to it. I'm going to buy it and then see how I get on. I, I can't afford to keep it long term. I can't afford to have that loan. So, um, but yeah, I've got it for now. I've got a track day next month, two days at Snetterton. So I can give the GSX-R a good shakedown. And I will be out on it again shortly, as soon as I can tax the thing and I get the V5 through to actually test out the wheels, the carbon wheels, and test out the remap and everything. But I'm looking forward to get back on that bike because I do love it. I just couldn't give it back. I just couldn't. I had to have it. And now I'm scared. Everyone says these things are quite thirsty. And I was like, yeah, they probably are a bit thirsty. But even running it in, not exceeding 4,000 revs, miles per gallon the best i'm getting let's have a look what is my current 34 miles per gallon is the best i'm getting out of this running it in not exceeding 4,000 revs however thirsty is it going to be once you're opening it up oh my word she's going to be a thirsty girl she's got a bit of a drinking problem Oh, we'll have to find somewhere just to pull over in a minute and I'll, I'll just show you how it looks with the new tank. I actually think it looks better. It does actually look better with this new tank on. So the only downside of it really is it's no longer original, you know. So if I were to keep this as a future classic, it's, oh, it's not got the original tank on. What happened there? That's, that's the only downside to it really. But I could, I could get another tank in the future, and if I'm ever feeling flush, I guess I could get the original tank. I'm keeping the old tank, and then, you know, it could be in the future that someone can replicate that paint process, and they can repair it and get it repainted. So I'm going to keep it and see what happens, but for now, she's carboned up with a carbon tank. Woo, that's tight. Let's stop at the posh car shop to do a walk round. The posh bike at the posh car shop. Look at these. Yeah, let's do it right here, shall we? What's that? Tell me. Isn't that the McLaren one with a single seat in the middle of the car? Mr. Bean had one till he smashed the shit out of it. I forgot what we call them. McLaren F1. So there is the new tank. So the carbon tank, the difference is the old one was dinged in right here. I'll show you a bit of video of, of the old tank. Proper ding right there. I've also have got a scratch here. Not a particularly nice thing. Right under my finger, right in front of me there. Gutted about that, but you can get a new one of these for about 350 quid. <laughs> but it's, it's doable, it's repairable. You can also get them in carbon. Moto Composites do these in carbon, so that could be an option. But that's the, car that's the carbon version of tank. The difference is being it has these pinstripes, which follow on from these pinstripes which are here anyway, and the pinstripes which are down the front of the bike, so it actually looks good. But the side of it, this side of the pinstripes, this is like a matte finished silver, slightly matte. The shiny finish is on top, which matches the rest of the bike, but it does have this matte on the sides. But I think it still looks spot on. It is fine, isn't it? It goes completely, and I think it looks better with that green pinstripe around it, so... I'm happy with that. Hello, doggy. I'm going to get told to move on in a minute. There's a guy outside with a camera and a rather nice motorcycle which is showing up our McLarens. Just here, there is the most tiny of tiny little marks. Tiny, he won't even come out on camera. It's fine. I mean, you're going to get little marks like that on it anyway. So, but obviously, if you're buying a brand new bike, you wouldn't accept it. And that's what happened. But um, I'm happy with that. I'm <laughs> Christ, yeah, I've dodged a bullet at that at 600 quid. Exhaust, that will be going. Tail tidy, RG tail tidy at home at the moment to go on. I've also got some different indicators to go on because they're rather disgusting and huge. But uh, yeah, I'm over the moon, I'm happy, I'm so pleased that's fixed. I mean, look at the frame welds on here. They're just exceptional, although these little, even the little bolts are like really nice, like aluminum bolt or steel bolts. But the, fr the, the welding, I compared it directly with the SX and it's, it's even these welds 
are so much nicer on this. You know, I'm not, I'm not dissing the SX by any means. I'm just sort of pointing out, you know, like the rear sets on this are just really nice quality. Even like the foot pegs are just lovely machine finish. You know, everything is just lovely. There's no need to change any of this stuff. It's all amazing. So I've got a GSX-R and a H2 now, two sports bikes. And this is for a man that said two years ago he's giving up sports bikes. <laughs> I've got two and nothing else. So, yeah, yeah. I don't listen to my own advice. So there's all sorts of stuff coming up on the channel. I've got a bit of a build up of uh, videos to get edited, really. I've got a couple of videos from the Tora trip, Tora adventure with Lyndon. Me and Womble went this time. Beautiful. 25 degrees, I think we had 32 degrees one day. We did a day of enduro riding, Lyndon teaching us enduro. Some of the trails around there, some of the climbs and inclines he had us doing. Oh, I learned so much on that trip. So there's a video coming for the off-road part of the Tora trip. And then we did two days on the GSs. We went into Ronda, stayed overnight in Ronda. Amazing town. Incredible roads all around that area. So there's a video coming for the for the road riding on the and there's two we both had a hp then linden has two of the hp 1250s now so it's incredible and we did some off-road on the gs's a bit more proper off-road than we did last time using the skills we'd learned the previous time on the, on the enduros but it's, it's incredible so i've got those videos to to get done and brought out i've got the second part of the h2xx ride so when I did the second part of that SX review, I didn't know I was buying this, so <laughs> there's no mention of, hate of, of this H2 in that video, so don't get confused <laughs> when that video comes out. Um, I've also got the 790 Adventure review, I just dropped that back to KTM yesterday, the little 790 Adventure, great little bike. So I've got that to edit and get up. I've also just picked up the new Super Duke GT from KTM. That is incredible i do love a super duke that thing is everything my super duke should have been so i'm I, I, that's going to be a good review that I, I already just riding that back from ktm today absolutely loved it so uh, yeah that's going to be a cracking review that one um what else have i got i've got have you heard of velocity moto these are this this is a small independent company where they've taken an mt09 and turned it into an RD 350 LC, basically. <laughs> an, RD3, an RD 350 LC body kit on it. I'll pop a picture up. They're gonna drop me down one for a week to have a play on. And uh, yeah, I'll bring you a review of that, but that looks really interesting, doesn't it? For us older folk who remember the 350 LC, it's a 350 LC, yeah, okay, it's a full stroke engine, but it's it's got that whole character about it. Wheelies, Oh, so I'm looking forward to getting hold of that. So that may be coming down to me this week. So it's all very exciting at the moment. There's lots to do. Like I said, track day next month, two days at Snetterton on the, I think it's the 7th and 8th of July. So in a couple of weeks time, me, Womble, Andy, all going up there with our bikes, two days, overnight camping. I'll put the dates on the screen because if, you, if you're close to Snetterton, a few people asked if they can come down, say hello. By all means do, be great to meet you. So the dates are going to be there these days, come down. I won't have this there, I'll take the GSXR around there. Come and watch. Come and say hello, I'll bring some stickers. Why not? Good to see you. I'm really looking forward to hearing that supercharger. <laughs> I've just not built the revs up enough to hear it. I thought that was like a dump valve noise or the gas being released, I was wrong. Apparently that fluttering noise is the the blades of the supercharger, the, the outside of the blades, breaking the sound barrier. <laughs> That's what that sound is. How cool is that? She's breaking the sound barrier. So thanks for watching guys, really appreciate it. You know, the people on Patreon who are contributing to the channel, incredible guys, thank you so much for that. I will put a link in it. I haven't really mentioned Patreon. I'm not going to, it's not something I'm going to push. 
you know, if you want to come along and have a look at that, what I tend to do is videos go on there first, so those guys get to see them first, comment on them first. I also put stuff up there like day-to-day -day stuff, what I'm doing, like say smashing the tank up. <laughs> those guys are all shared their information with those guys straight away what bikes and so you know i'm not i won't mention it again <laughs> but uh the patreon is there for those who want to support what we do what i'm doing but uh, i've got h2s to run here i've got h2s to smash up and keep on the road so <laughs> i need all the help i can get but thanks guys thanks for watching really appreciate it i'll see you soon this is power level one which is full power This thing is absolutely bonkers. It's also pretty quick. Yeah, all right. Never mind, get me it up. Give me this any day of the week. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh. Yeah.